If I were to buy all the things on my wish list right now, it would definitely break the bank. So we're not going to do that. Instead, I am going to take those as inspiration from stores like Pottery Barn, West Elm, Kirkland's and more, and we are going to dupe them for a fraction of the cost. I'm talking, we're saving hundreds of dollars. We're going to DIY instead of buy, and we're going to get started right now. <laughs> A huge thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video, and let's get into the first dupe. I fell in love with the shape of these West Elm decorative objects that were being used as bookends, but for a set of two, they were $68. So I was recently walking through the craft section at Target, and they had similar shapes in wood cutouts for $5 each. So I grabbed two, brought them home, and stained them in one of my favorite stains, English Chestnut. The great part about DIYing these high-end dupes is you can make them whatever color you want to have them match your aesthetic and the wood tones in your house. So I like darker woods, so I ended up doing this color but you could do whatever color that you want super quick and easy and they look very similar to those West Elm ones for a fraction of the cost I'm going to be using them as bookends just as they were shown but I'm using them with these decorative books that I have from Hobby Lobby I just wait until table decor goes on sale and I grab those for half off and this setup is perfect all in I saved 85% DIYing instead of buying this is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge welcome back to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each week to DIY with me. I am so thankful to have you guys along for the ride and if you're not already a craft buddy, no worries, just hit subscribe down below so you can DIY along with us. These handwoven baskets are so pretty and add some texture to wherever you put them, but at $160 a pop from Pottery Barn, way too much. So to DIY them, I went looking for much cheaper alternatives that looked like a great base that I could then add the hand woven texture to. The top one is Threshold from Target and that one was 30 bucks. And then at my local Marshalls, I found this chest. I'm gonna use it for beach towels this summer and it's so nice because you can open it and there's a ton of room inside and that one was only 30 dollars with the lid. Now for the one that I'm going to make over for the hand woven look, I grabbed this one for $16.99 at my Marshalls as well. So to get that look, I'm going to take some cotton twine that I got from Dollar Tree, but you can use yarn, whatever you have. I just like the thin cotton look and a doll needle. Now I like this high synth seagrass basket because it already has openings in the weave. So I was able to tie on my yarn string and get to work. Once it was tied on, I got to work and really I just kind of wung it whatever felt good as I went. I decided to do this kind of step up and down thing and I got to a certain part where it, the weave was really tight. So all you have to do is find the next opening, get your twine through, and then you can kind of shimmy it over like dental floss so that it is all nice and even. Then I made it all the way to the end, tied it off, and this basket is ready to go. Now you could go around the entire outside, but I decided it is a little bit tedious, so I didn't wanna spend all that time on it. I figured I could always flip it around if I want a plain basket. And I really like just this touch of hand embroidery. And I also love that I know that I did it myself. It's a perfect addition to sit next to my bench that I DIY'd in my recent two x four video. And compared to side by side, I think they look so similar and I saved 90% by DIYing and not buying. I'm always looking for fun ways to add texture to my setups in my house. And so I was inspired by these $99 outdoor candles. I decided to head to Home Depot, grab some mortar mix, but you could also use fast drying concrete and make some containers myself. Now I went on a hunt and found a bunch of different containers from Dollar Tree and Target so that I could test them out and let you guys know everything from Tupperware to hard plastic serveware at Dollar Tree. In a bucket, I eyeballed the amount of mortar mix that I needed and then I mixed it with water according to the package instructions. I'm just using a five gallon bucket paint stir stick to get it all mixed up. Now you want the consistency to be to a point where when you pick it up, it's not going to fall when you flip the stick over like this. So you kind of want to add water and mixture until you get it where you want. Now you're gonna grab two different size bowls. You want them to be similar shapes and we're gonna grease the inside of the first one. That is so your bowl comes out and doesn't crack. Then we're gonna add our mix and then grease the bottom of the second bowl, just so then that way anything that's coming into contact with the mortar mix is nice and slicked up. You can also use vegetable oil on like a paper towel, but I just decided to go with the spray. It's a lot easier. Once you push your bowl in to get the desired shape that you want, I also took my little rubber mallet and hit the sides just to get out any air bubbles. And then I am going to make sure that that is pushed down so it dries like that. 
I did a ton of different varieties of different sizes, but the same method, you're gonna grease the inside of the bottom one, the outside of the top one, add some additional weight to the top, and then you also wanna make sure that that top is flat so your bowl area is kind of flat like that. I also wanted some square ones like the inspiration, so I took this tray from Dollar Tree and did the exact same process. I just made sure that none of the mortar mix touched the next container next to it, so then they were all separate items and I didn't have to try to break them apart later on. Now here is where you have to be patient. These, I got really excited and I wanted to test it out sooner than it should have been, and so definitely let them sit 48 hours just like this. Don't touch them, just let them sit. I got a little too crazy and thought it was dry. I tried to get the other bowl out and this is what happened. And it made me so sad. So what I learned is that when you have these dark splotches in your mix, that is where it's not fully dry. You wanna make sure that it is two days worth of dry, 48 plus hours before you try to get anything out of there. Then you can remove the middle one, let it dry another day, honestly. And then I used my hands to kind of flip it over and use gravity to have it fall out of the bowl. I was so worried that I was gonna crack them after that, so I gave them a ton of time and that really helped so then that way I wasn't breaking anything. I had to slide out the one with the three little containers just because I didn't have enough arm surface area to flip it over with gravity, but it worked out just fine. And then once everything was out, I gave it another day to dry. So this is kind of like a five day process, but you'll be so glad you did because once everything is dry, these are beautiful. You can put a variety of different pieces in there. All of the vase filler were just 10 dollars each at Target. I also added this greenery to one and it's just so nice to add some texture to your setups and vignettes. I also used the small container as like a little trinket dish on my entryway table and I really like the color of the mortar mix. You can also use white cement or just the quick drying cement and while I didn't have a direct comparable price, mine all in were about $10 to make six of these in different sizes which I think is awesome. With my job, I am constantly online, and when I travel, I am always looking for places with free Wi-Fi so I can stay connected with my craft buddies. And I've also learned that using any sort of public or shared Wi-Fi without ExpressVPN is like yelling your bank detail information for everyone in the middle of a crowded craft aisle. Yikes. ExpressVPN is an app I've been using to encrypt my online activity. They reroute my data through their network of secure servers, which helps keep me protected on public Wi-Fi versus being a sitting duck for hackers. Even when I'm on my home Wi-Fi, my internet service provider can see all the sites that I've visited, and they can legally sell that info to ad companies who are then going to turn around and use it to target me to spend more money. ExpressVPN can help protect you there too. And while rerouting data might sound intense, you don't need to be techie to be protected. Just launch the app, click the connect button, and that is it. It works on all devices, both Apple and Android, from phones and laptops to tablets and even your home router, meaning everyone using your Wi-Fi is protected. With new digital scams popping up like everywhere, ExpressVPN does the heavy lifting to give me peace of mind online, both at home and on the go. Head to expressvpn.com slash wit to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free. Or you can use your smartphone's camera to scan this QR code and it'll take you right there. Now let's get back into the DIYs. I've wanted a nice big mirror for our front room for a while now, and I love this one from Pottery Barn, but not for $599. So I decided to go to the thrift store and see if I could see or find something similar to the size. So then that way I could potentially make it over. I ended up finding this one, which was the perfect size. And I also liked that it had a thick border on the outside. I decided to just make a box around the outside with one by six lumber. I ended up grabbing two pieces of one by six at six feet long that fit really nice in the Jeep. And I wanted to make sure there weren't any major cracks out of the wood. And you wanna look down the wood like I'm doing here. You can see this one veers to the left, but this one is nice and straight. And that's the wood that you wanna pick to help with your corners. Now we're gonna lay down our wood on the first side. I decided to do the long ones first and I'm going to measure so then that way I know how to cut my 45 degree angles. I'm gonna take my saw and set it at a 45 degree miter and then I'm going to cut the first edge. Then I'm gonna lay it down and make sure that it is the right length. I'm gonna mark it so it fits my mirror and I'm also gonna make a small little mark on there so I know what direction to cut the 45 degree angle. They're gonna be perpendicular, and if I don't mark it, I will cut it wrong, and then I will be very upset. 
After you cut that first piece, we are going to cut a second piece the exact same, just mirror for the other side of your mirror. So now we've got our two sides and we're gonna measure long point to long point on either end and my ended up being 29 inches. So I'm gonna cut another 45 degree angle and then I am going to make it so it's 29 inches from the long point to the long point. So I'm measuring our long point here, 29 inches. And then I also made another mark to make sure that I was cutting at the right angle. If you have a piece of wood and you're not gonna be cutting at the right angle, you can flip it over and that will solve the problem. Once I do that one fit, I cut the exact same one for the bottom and it was time to distress to get that really old reclaimed wood look. Now I went to town with a hammer, some needle nose pliers. I also did a flathead screwdriver with my mallet. I wanted some deep valleys within the wood. I really wanted it to look just like beat up like I found it on the side of the road or in an old barn somewhere. And so it took some time and I just really got creative. There was no rhyme or reason. I also used my flathead screwdriver to pop off some pretty big divots on the end pieces. And you'll see here in a second that it really gave it character. Once I got done distressing, I just took a 220 grit little sanding block and got rid of all the little pieces that were sticking up. I don't want to go over it with a power sander because you're going to get rid of a lot of the character you just put in there. And the pine that I had wasn't super, super rough to begin with. If it is rough, sand before you distress and then just do a hand sand. Then to assemble this frame to go around my mirror, I decided to use pocket holes. This is a Craig jig and Craig has a really great tutorial video on how to use their system. This is like a $29 little tool and you just use it with clamps and I absolutely love it because it gives you pocket holes and then you can use pocket hole screws to hide them and it also gives you a solid joint. I'm going to clamp this down to the table and I'm going to use one long side as well as a short side to hook everything together. Now as you can see here you're not seeing any distressing because I put those pocket holes on the back because we are going to hide them. So on the front you're going to get a nice flush look without any screw holes there. Now I ended up doing three quarter inch holes, three quarter inch pocket holes rather, and then I'm using some one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to attach it on each joint. So I've got two holes on each corner, so that's two screws per joint to hook everything together, and I put those pocket holes on the shorter top and bottom pieces. Once I got all those assembled, everything was nice and flush, and then it was time to finish it. So I decided to use some early American stain, and I made sure to fill any of those gaps with some extra stain so it came out bold like this. Let it dry in the sun overnight, and then it was time to hook my frame to my actual mirror. So I'm gonna use a caulk gun and some heavy duty liquid nails here to get the top off. There's a little hole in a caulk gun that you can cut off the end or you can use scissors. And then we're gonna take this little stick that pops out of the front and push it into that nozzle. That is going to open the gateway between the plastic nozzle and the actual container of liquid nails. We're gonna pump it and then we're gonna apply it all the way around the outside of our mirror. This is going to allow us to get basically a super heavy duty construction grade adhesive between our frame and our mirror frame. And so I'm getting everything lined up and then I'm going to clamp it on all four sides just to make sure everything is set. Once I have it clamped down, I grabbed my nail gun and used some one and a quarter inch brad nails to nail all the way around the outside to that highest point of the frame. And then I also went in a little bit just to make sure that this was attached. You wanna let those liquid nails cure for at least 24 hours, but then after that was done, the nails will hold it while it's curing. And this thing is beautiful. I literally cannot believe how great this turned out. I was hoping it would, but the distressing on the pine worked so well. I think this looks so beautiful and it's definitely what I had in mind for this space in our front room. We've got windows on the opposite wall, so it definitely reflects a lot of that natural light and I think this turned out beautifully. So I was able to save 93%. Now let's be honest, I was not spending $600 on a mirror like ever, but being able to create this myself was super, super fun.
I've gotten a lot of questions about folks wanting some ideas for their farmhouse signs if they've got a lot of things with words on it. So we're gonna turn it into art. Now you can definitely still keep your signs with words on it, but I have a ton of those. So what I did is measure my sign and it ended up being a 16 by 20. It makes it a lot easier if your sign is a traditional size. And I found this image on Canva. I will save it and share it over on my blog if you would like to download it as well. I ordered a 16 by 20 inch poster from Walgreens and it ended up being like 12 bucks. I always order from Walgreens when they're having a poster sale. And then all you have to do is trim it down and hook it to your sign with some double stick tape. I love this because you're gonna see that beautiful wood frame and you're gonna be able to use the existing hardware on this sign. But this was just in my basement. I wasn't using it, so the sign was free for me to use. And now I've got this really pretty like ocean scape, but it doesn't look too summery that I can leave this up all year round if I want. And you would not guess that it was just some random word sign underneath. Another way you can use this technique is if you want to make like a dupe for the small woods wood framed photo signs. All you have to do is the same thing. Go ahead and measure your sign. Then you can order a print enlargement. If it's not the exact size, try to get as close as you can. Here, mine was just a little short in the height department, but I knew the back was already painted black, so it was gonna be okay. Now, if you are doing something where you're not gonna go directly to the edge, I like to put the tape on the poster versus putting it on the sign because that will help you get it all placed centrally. But I think this turned out so cute. It's a really nice version of our most recent family photo that we can display. And both of these turned out so nice. And honestly, these were just signs chilling in my basement. So love that. I love too that this was 93% off of the artwork that Pottery Barn was selling. You can definitely dupe artwork for much, much less. So when I was at the thrift store looking for a mirror for that wood framed one, this beautiful one caught my eye. I decided to purchase it because it was only 20 bucks and I brought it home and grabbed some easy off. I applied this to the wood and used it as a stripper of sorts instead of like a citrus strip. And this actually worked out really great for me. I let it sit for 30 minutes in the sun with the easy off on, and then I just took an old scrub daddy sponge, put it in a solution of just some Dawn dish soap and water, and I got to scrubbing. Now you can see that those suds are turning a little bit orange, and once I got everything kind of scraped off, I took my hose and I sprayed the entire thing. Now the great thing is with the oven cleaner, it is made for an oven, obviously, and so you can put it on that mirror and it's not gonna hurt the mirror finish, but it is gonna start to get rid of some of that orangey tinge to the wood. Now obviously you can only do this on real wood, you can't do this on like, composite wood. You also want to make sure that you test a little section as well because if you go ahead and do it, it's not, it may not work on all woods. But with a thrift store find like this that's cheap, I was willing to try it. I ended up going through and doing this three different times, letting it completely dry in between. But once I did that, I had this beautiful raw kind of bleached wood looking mirror and I went through with a 120, a 180, and a 220 grit sandpaper. I started with the lowest number because with sandpaper the smaller numbers are more gritty and they're going to take more off and so I started with that just to get rid of any of the extra little bits. I also decided to do it by hand instead of using a power sander because I didn't want to take off any of those pretty details. Now the back was a little rough after getting wet and I honestly didn't think about it until I flipped it over but I was able to salvage the most of the back piece. I ended up just taking off the old staples that were coming out, restapled it down, and then I cut just a piece of scrap wood. This is a one by three furring strip down to size. I used some wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails to hook it to the top here, especially because I plan to use this as a leaning mirror. I want to make sure that that mirror is not going to fall out backwards on me because it's not permanently affixed to the outside. After a quick Windex, I was able to bring it inside and get it displayed. And I love how this looks here too. I staged both mirrors in this area to decide which one was going to live here. And personally, I do really love this mirror, but I think the other one's going to stay here. This one might go up in our bedroom, but I just love the raw wood look. It looks super custom. It looks like uh, something I would have bought at like Restoration Hardware. I absolutely love it. And while there was no direct comp, all in, I was able to do this for 30 bucks. Love it.
I don't know where Pottery Barn gets off like pricing their lamps. I guess it's just the high end vibe, but I'm not spending almost $400 on a lamp. So instead we're going to Goodwill or you can use one out of your basement, get one from a friend, wherever you can secure a lamp that is a shape that you like. And we are going to start by cleaning it. Then we are going to tape off any areas that you don't want to get gunky. So like the top electrical area, as well as the plug. Then I'm gonna mix up some plaster of Paris. I just follow the instructions on the container and you're going for a consistency of like thick pancake batter. Once that's all mixed up, then I'm gonna use gloves and apply a really liberal amount to the side of my lamp, just really covering it and really trying to dampen those grooves a little bit. It doesn't have to be fully covered, but I didn't want them to be as deep as it was with this kind of like 90s vibe lamp. Here's what it looked like when everything was covered. And once it got a little tacky, I used a glove with some water and I went through and kind of rubbed it in. Now you wanna do this before it dries, but you wanna let it dry just a little bit and kind of set up so like give it five ten minutes and then you can kind of help like level it out so you don't have those high peaks on there like you would when you first put it on because it's kind of tacky once it's completely dry i'm using a mixture of dried coffee grounds and some sandstone paint to give it color and texture and also cover up any of those little pink spots that are still peeking out now, when I originally shared this project, I did get some questions about putting the coffee grounds in there. Like, would it get moldy? I made sure that these were dry before I put them in there. So definitely don't put wet ones in there. And I'm not using a ton ton, but that's just an FYI. I needed a little bit of dimension. So I added a little bit of like a cocoa brown color and kind of buffed it in while the second coat was a little bit wet still. And that allowed me to get kind of a two dimensional, even three dimensional stone look. My last step was to seal everything in. So I just used a triple thick spray sealant in matte finish. I don't like glossy on top of this cause it's not gonna give you the look that you want. But once it has a matte finish, this lamp is good to go. It looks so similar to the one that they are selling for much, much more. And you can also have the colors match your house almost perfectly. So overall 91% savings DIYing instead of buying. And I have a fun new lamp for my front room. Also, if you get a lamp that doesn't work, I suggest using battery operated little light bulbs. I have a favorite from Amazon that I will link down below. And finally, I couldn't share this Pottery Barn dupes video without sharing a dupe for this outdoor furniture. For just a chair, they wanted 200 bucks and I was able to make this whole entire set out of two by fours for under $100 in lumber. This was the kind of crown jewel of my recent two by four builds video. And so if you were looking for outdoor furniture for the summer, I wanted to let you know that that video is there. So in case you missed it, I will show you how to build this entire thing. I used plans from Anna White and the same set that I used as an inspo was almost 19 $1,500. I was able to make this cushions, all nails, stain, everything for $446. So that's 75% off and we are loving it. Now, what I need from you is to head down to the comments and let me know what your favorite dupe was in today's video. Also, let me know if you plan on recreating any of these because I love hearing that from you guys. Also, while you're down there, expand the description box. I have all of the supplies and different links from today's video down there. I'll also have more information on today's sponsor. A huge thank you to ExpressVPN. You can head to expressvpn.com slash wit to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN free. Thanks so much for watching. If you're not already a craft buddy, be sure to hit subscribe so you can craft along with us and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.